welcome once again to The Blueprints. It's Canada's conservative podcast. I'm your host, Jamie Schmale, Member of Parliament for Halliburton, Kawartha Likes Brock. Thank you so much for joining us. We have a great topic to discuss today. It's on tourism and the recovery, because as we all know, it's probably an industry that hits every community right across Canada. And probably you know someone who has been affected by the catastrophic impact of COVID-19 in the tourism sector. So we're going to bring in Tony Baldinelli. He's the Member of Parliament for Niagara Falls. He's also the Special Advisor to the Leader, Aaron O'Toole, on COVID recovery and tourism recovery. So we're going to have a quick chat with him about that. But before we get there, we need to remind you, please like, comment, subscribe, share this program. Also, if you can't listen to the whole thing now, you can download it later on platforms like iTunes, CastBox, Google Play, you name it, it's out there. And together we can push back against the ever-moving liberal agenda and even provide an alternative source of information that you might not be getting from the mainstream media. So we do need your help with that. So in the meantime, we'll get right into it. We'll welcome Tony, Tony Baldinelli. Thank you very much for joining us. And a special announcement, it is your birthday today. That's Not right. really to you an announcement, but to the public, <laughs> it is a special announcement. Well, this is a gift unto itself, uh, appearing on your show for the first time. So thanks, Jamie. It's a, it's a pleasure being on the show. I, I want to think that we coordinated your appearance on the show because of your birthday, but we're just not that organized. So <laughs> no, what no, a great that's right. <laughs> perfect it's, coincidence. Perfect timing. Absolutely. Actually. Well, for those that don't know, and I think most people do, <laughs> Niagara Falls is a very tourist heavy area that relies yes. on it to drive their economy and 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 i think your area has been hit particularly hard we can also talk about the urban centers the major cities who have been hit extremely hard as well the ones that have built up around their convention centers the infrastructure that goes into that and yep. seeing that conferences hotels restaurants have gone down significantly because of the lack of travel tell us what you're going through in your community what you're hearing what you're seeing and, and the thoughts uh, to go along with that well, well, thank you, Jamie, and you're absolutely correct. Uh, Niagara Falls is uh, the, the the number one tourism leisure destination in all of Canada. And um, as our provincial minister likes to say about uh, the impact on tourism with COVID, you know, tourism sector, particularly uh, places like Niagara, we were hit first, we were hit hardest, and it's going to take our sector the longest to recover. Um, in my home community, there's 40,000 people in this community of Niagara, the regional area, that owe their jobs and uh, livings to uh, the tourism sector. Uh, we've got about 16,000 hotel rooms, and we provide about $2.4 billion in, in receipts alone. And almost overnight, when COVID hit in March, that just ended. And um, what was really impactful was the, the, the fact that we were just coming off what would have been considered the best tourism year ever in 2019. So what was happening was a number of these uh, tourism operators were actually uh, taking out loans. They were expanding their hotels. They were building theaters. And for all of that to suddenly almost impact overnight uh, what, what's happening um, in Niagara. It's, it's been devastating, in fact. I think you're bang on in terms of uh, travel industry and tourism industry having uh, massive years in terms of activity. A lot of that had to do with the fact that people had more, more disposable income, but also the fact that, that people were noticing that because of that, the, the market was responding, more flights were being offered, prices were dropping. It became affordable for more and more people because of, of the good times, as you say. And now we're, we're basically hit to, to next to zero. We did see decent movement, I think, within pro provincial tourism, but yep. that still isn't enough because the international tourists uh, are something that I think every sector relies on. And that could be whether it is your area, it could be a, a local industry or charity that is holding a race or something mm -hmm. like that, or a fair, they use international tourists to drive their numbers as well. No, you're absolutely correct. Here in Ontario, uh, domestic visitation, visitors from within this province and uh, to a certain degree, uh, degree from outside of Canada, uh, the rest of the provinces are our number one visitor base. But 
It's those international visitors. It's those visitors from the United States who probably cross about 13 million into the uh, province of Ontario alone. They're, they're the ones that, that spend extra amounts of money. They stay a little longer. They're, they'll stay at the restaurants. They spend a significant amount of money uh, more than a domestic visitor would, per se. So it's really missing those, um, those visitations, which ended immediately with the travel bans. And uh, I live on a community that has four international borders border crossings. So the borders with the United States were closed immediately. And so we've seen uh, the impact uh, of uh, losing those visitors almost immediately as well. So there are, are a number of industries that are doing fairly well, the grocery business, the some building sectors, hardware stores. They, I think every, everyone can point to some area within their community that is doing very well. However, it's been said that Canadian tourism has now gone into survival mode, and that can include hotels, restaurants, bars, nightclubs, uh, you name it. Um, COVID has pretty much destroyed um, uh, a lot, pretty much all of their business or their ability to open. So what, what are you thinking? What are you hearing in terms of, of how do we go into the recovery mode so we don't inviscerate all of these businesses, most of them small businesses that are built on the backs of just everyday people finding an idea, creating a dream of their own and moving with it? No, you're absolutely right, Jamie. I mean, uh, the impact of uh, of tourism on its own, just in Canada, I mean, almost one in 10 workers works in the tourism sector. You know, you're looking about uh, 1.8, almost closer to 2 million people had worked in the tourism sector. And again, immediately with COVID, that was impacted and that changed almost overnight. I mean, uh, the, the government has created several programs and, and several, I mean, to to be fair, some of these programs are, 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 are beneficial, but what they've done is they've taken an overarching approach, a kind of a one size fits all approach to their, um, their, their programs and assistance that misses the mark with so many of these small businesses that are out there. Uh, for example, I mean, the hotel sector, it probably employs about 300,000 people, workers in Canada alone. I mean, the, the business credit availability program that the government touted as one of those programs or instruments for that sector, while almost 60% of hotels can't qualify for that. The banks right now see them as too high risk. So they're looking for a lifeline right now. You've got to remember these uh, these hotel operators throughout the country, they were coming off some of their best years. So these, uh, these uh, hotel owners were reinvesting back. They're heavily leveraged. They've spent their reserves. Usually they'll, 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 they'll build up a base during the summer months and use those reserves to take them through that, that slow winter period to get them into the next year. Well, those, those reserves have been spent already to get them through the uh, through the summer months, and so uh, they're they're feeling that if if things don't don't change, that uh, we could lose several hotels um, uh, throughout the country, uh, and uh, that would be a shame. Again, I mean, we're talking a lot of them are small time business operators, family run uh, operations. So it's critical that um, we come forward with a plan, a recovery plan, and that's why you know our party has been talking since March. We need a sector specific tourism recovery plan. And we have yet to see that from this government. And that's that's disappointing, to say the least. For those just joining me, I'm speaking with Tony Baldinelli. He's the member of parliament for Niagara Falls. He's also the special advisor to the leader, Aaron O'Toole on tourism recovery. Uh, he has a lot of experience based on this in his previous uh, career in, in, the, in the business. So, Tony, I just want to point out this, this one stat, and I know you know this, um, but it's, it's pretty impactful when you hear about it. As of June 2020, according to the Travel Industry Association of Canada, cancellations and losses for the business events sector is an estimated loss of $925 million. That's a 79% drop from 2019. We talk about an industry that's been hit hard. We mentioned tourism being in the survival mode in, in Canada and probably right across the world as well. Um, the, these, and you mentioned the numbers of the job, this, this impacts pretty much everyone. This is why we need to have that sector specific funding, but also I think we can even talk about how rapid testing, if Health Canada would finally approve something, could help the tourism industry recover. 
You're absolutely correct. I mean, as we uh, slowly start moving forward towards a recovery and that path forward, um, rapid testing offers us an ability to, to get moving and, and get the borders open and get travel happening again as quickly as possible. So that's part of the solution. And as you mentioned, this government has been slow to act. I mean, they've always been a day late. We've been advocating, again, go back several months for rapid testing. Why was it that Air Canada had to implement a pilot project at Pearson Airport on rapid testing on its own. It had to ask almost Health Canada begrudgingly to participate. And lo and behold, what is it? Several months later, the, the federal government decides to do its own pilot in Calgary. Well, the, again, a little too little too late. I mean, at Pearson, they've already done about 30,000 tests. They've got some data. So why don't we build on that? Let's go forward. We need a path forward. And this government, unfortunately, hasn't been able to deliver. Now, on a local note, how was it this past summer? I know Niagara Falls tried to open a bit. Uh, I, I know there was some interprovincial travel all across the country, whether you're in the Atlantic, in the West, it doesn't matter. There was some try kind of uh, movement to incentivize people to to travel around their own province and get to know it a bit better. Uh, how did you see your area and what have you heard from other parts of the country uh, as they tried to attempt uh, anything they could to grasp on those dollars that are very scarce at this point? Well, uh, to your point, I mean, Niagara became a kind of a, a favorite destination for weekend visits. Uh, so people would try to get out of uh, the larger urban communities and come down to Niagara. So you would see increased numbers, but in no way uh, would replace those numbers that had been previously. Um, a colleague of mine, a former colleague of mine shared a statistic. Um, he was um, moderating a call with the hotel sector down in Niagara. And I think uh, if, I, if I remember the statistics correctly, he said in 2019, the hotel accommodation sector in Niagara generated about $500 million. And up to, uh, up to October of this year, they had uh, generated $151 million. So you've lost about $400 million in that one year because of COVID. So that sector has taken that impact on that itself. So, I mean, and take that to the other uh, aspects for the restaurants, for the, uh, the attraction settings, you know, for the parks. And so, I mean, it, it has that spillover effect on everyone else's. Uh, so it's been, uh, it's been quite a, an impact. Now, I'm sure it's frustrating to the people you are speaking with uh, all across the country that are involved in tourism, especially when, as you mentioned just a few moments ago, there are groups, there are organizations, there are uh, businesses that are trying to work outside what the government is doing in terms of Health Canada and their slow approach to approving rapid tests, many of which are approved in the United States and in the European Union, which mm -hmm. many would say is the gold standard. So that's got to have some frustration when, as you mentioned at the beginning of the program, those that have invested in new hotels, new restaurants, new theaters ready to open this summer basically had that shut. And, and meanwhile, as we go through this whole process, we're noticing there, there might be a path forward, rapid testing, other methods, you name it. The tourist industry has a whole slew of ideas. Um, that the, There must be some growing frustration within the business community and the restaurant community as a whole uh, as they, they start to wonder what it's going to be like this winter. Well, you're getting that uh, now, Jamie. Uh, I mean, especially as we hit the second wave, the growing frustration here in our community is, is, is uh, palatable. Palatable. I mean, um, for example, our just our two casinos alone in Niagara employ 4,000 people, Jamie, and they have not. Uh, those employees haven't been to work since March. I mean, I mean, it's great to have these programs that the government has developed for you know those tourism workers, the Canada Recovery Benefit. But I mean, all well. But I mean, these these people want to go back to work. I mean, it, it doesn't make sense to operate a casino with only 50 people. But if you have rapid testing and as their path forward uh, becomes a better and uh, more certainty is, is developed, uh, I mean, vigilance always has to be the key uh, as we, we deal with COVID. But what's that path forward? How are we going to get to that stage where we can operate and, and, and run that casino, for where we can get people back to work? Those 4,000 people want to get back to work. Rapid testing is a, is a means to do that. And again, we've been slow off the mark. Now, we, we don't know how the rest of it is going to unfold in terms of the how quick Canada is going to be able to 
distribute the vaccine, how it's going to happen. I think the Prime Minister earlier today did mention that uh, Canada is not at the front of the line in terms of uh, getting their allotment of uh, vaccines, which causes a bit of nervousness, I think, within any industry. Uh, and, and so we're still not sure how it's going to unfold. We, we don't know how much longer this is going to go on for. We are learning about the deep impacts, but it's not all doom and gloom. I think there, there are many provinces have talked about the response, which we've done. Uh, we're talking about the recovery and how we, we live with it, the resilience of it all, and how we hopefully are able to, to save these businesses and, and uh, these jobs that go with it, the wealth, the opportunity in our communities. Um, and, and so there, there, there is a path forward. We just need to see some action by this government. You're absolutely correct. And and what we're starting to see is, is some of those actions provincially as well. I know in the recent uh, Ontario budget, uh, the government came out with a tax credit uh, uh, program to to assist and, and promote um, uh, staycations uh, throughout the province. So that will help benefit as well as programs that will assist those small businesses. What we've done, I mean, is uh, we've continued to, to advocate uh, for those programs that needed to be changed federally. For example, that rent subsidy program. I mean, Jamie, like you, uh, like, I mean, we wasted 12 weeks. We could have had that program in place by this summer, but this government decided to probe parliament and then waited six weeks to implement the legislation. It's in the Senate. It's been passed. But then they realized they've also made a mistake in this legislation. So there's 12 weeks wasted. We could have had this money in the hands of those uh, those small businesses uh, starting in September when their rents were due. Now we're going to have to go back and say now those people who can just apply as of Monday, the, the, the program starts as of September. Well, I mean, that, I mean, those people still had bills to pay. And this government was, again, a day short. Tony, before I let you go back to your birthday celebrations here, you don't look a day over 35. Any parting <laughs> words? No, I, I'd like to thank you for this opportunity, Jamie. And um, again, talk about the importance of this tourism sector. People don't realize. I mean, there's 338 members of parliament. I think tourism touches us all. And it's an important sector in our economy. And what we need is a, is a path forward. And I look forward to um, hearing from this government. We've been advocating since March again for this recovery plan. Perhaps we'll hear something in this economic statement. But um, if early indications are, are anything, I'm not, I'm not certain. But um, maybe by a budget in the springtime. Well, we're hoping for a budget at some point. At that some would point. would be nice this year. That's hopefully. right. Hopefully, not much time left. Thank you very much, Tony Baldinelli, the Member of Parliament for Niagara Falls. He's also the Special Advisor to the Leader, Aaron O'Toole, on Tourism Recovery. We, we appreciate his time. We wish him a happy birthday. And uh, we know that he'll be watching and listening next Tuesday because that's when we have new content. Every Tuesday, 1.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Great information, great stuff. We're hoping to pass along to you. And that's where we need your help. Please like, comment, subscribe, share this program. If you can't watch it all now on platforms like Facebook, you can download it later for CastBox, iTunes, Google Play, you name it, it's out there. Together we can push back against the ever-moving liberal agenda. Please join us again, as I mentioned, next Tuesday, 1.30 p.m. Eastern Time with brand new content. In the meantime, thank you so much for joining us. And remember, as always, low taxes, less government, more freedom. That's the blueprint.